Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS laptop. This is an ASUS G16 2023 model and the exact model number for this one is an ASUS ROG Strike G614J model. And in this video I'm going to go over how you can open it up and how you can upgrade the storage to a higher capacity and what are the configuration you can have and what are the limits of the storage in here. They do get shipped out with a 500 gig or one terabyte 256. In this case, my client wants to remove the 500 gig that it comes in here and add a two terabyte uh, storage. Uh, I recommend you guys to get the Samsung uh, Pro version NVMe, or if you want a little cheaper, go with an Evo Plus. But these are the two greatest uh, solid and durable uh, storage. You can have up to two two terabyte in here with no problem, or you can grab your 500 gig and put on a secondary space and have your two terabyte for the Windows and your games and extra 500 gig. But in this case, we're gonna remove that 500 gig in there. We're just gonna leave the two terabyte in there. All right, so let's get into it. And first, I'm gonna open up this one, make sure that I got the package correctly. So there we have it nicely. The storage right in here. We have this one ready to install. All right, first thing first, we're gonna power off and back up your files because you have to install the Windows freshly installed. And this is a brand new one, so there's no backup in here. We don't need to back up anything. Just remember your Windows license key, everything is based on your motherboard and your Microsoft account, so it's gonna be automatically registered. All right, we're gonna grab ourselves the opening tools. I'll be using an iFix screwdriver set, and we're gonna use a Philips number one. Also, I made a short video how to create your Windows 10 or Windows 11 USB boot drive. I'll leave that link in the video description. I'll leave another link how to install the Windows the proper way on this laptop without having all those bloatware. I recommend you guys to win install Windows 10 still for another couple of years because it's still solid and yeah, better than Windows 11. It's like a less crashes and better updates has on it. After two years, maybe you can go to Windows 11, or I don't know when you're watching this video, you might have even Windows 13. All right, down here, we're gonna see a whole bunch of screws. First, there are two types of screws, the short ones and the long ones. The short ones are the front end of the laptop, and the long ones are the sides and the one in the middle, which is camouflaged by this grill. The screw on the front end of the laptop, right side, this one here, we're not gonna touch, we're gonna leave it for the end because this one has a lot of C-lock and it will not come out entirely and there's a purpose for that. I'll explain that in a second. We're gonna remove all the front end of the screws from except the one on the right. These are the short ones. And the rest of the screws are the longer screws. We're gonna keep them in a different pile so we don't mismatch them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you want my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in a comment area. I appreciate that. All right, once we remove all the screws, except the one in the corner here, and you're gonna see why. The reason for the C-lock is to hold the screw and pushes the cover away from the bottom palm rest, so you can see a tiny gap in here as soon as I start rotating this screw. And I'll keep rotating and I hit a tiny click sounds and that's when I let go. And for opening tools, I'll be using a guitar pick and metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. I'm gonna stick it right in that gap in there and I'm gonna work around in the front about all the way around. I'm gonna hear those tiny click sounds. Those are the clips are getting loose. You do the front and you wanna do the side right here. Just pop it open. To the left and to the right on this side too. So I'm sticking it right there and there we go. Once you do the side and the front, you wanna grab it and wiggle it around and it will snap the tiny clips that you need to release. Those are the clips are getting unlocked. So don't worry, you're not breaking anything. Once you remove the bottom cover, and right away, you can see the battery right in here. You do not need to disconnect the battery to do RAM upgrade or storage upgrade, absolutely not necessary. But if you do want it disconnected, you have to remove one and two screw for this fan 
and then you can disconnect the battery in here, but it's absolutely safe if you power off the laptop completely. There's an M.2 Gen 5 connector right in here, and there's a Gen 4 M.2 NVMe under this label right in here, and they do provide you with a screw. So you can either keep your 500 gig in here, or one, one terabyte, whatever you got it from the factory, and add an additional two terabyte in here, in this connector right there, and the screws right in there, and you can put it. Just let me rip this up apart so you guys can see for the sake of the video. To put this one in here, additional storage, first you wanna remove the tiny screw that they give you right on top of the riser. Then you wanna see uh, the connector right in here and there's a tiny notch right there. You wanna make sure the notch matches the notch on your NVMe. And you wanna bring it down in 45 or 30 degree inside and push it inside the jack and it will stay up like this. And then you want to push it down and make sure the screw hole matches. Once the screw hole is matching in there, you want to put this tiny screw right over. There is no heatsink needed for up to two terabyte. After two terabyte, you might want to get a slim heat heatsink for this one, right? Now that's how you can add an additional, or you can put a big uh, two terabyte in here and remove this 500 gig and put it on the secondary storage. And you can format it and have an extra space. All right, just remove it, slide it back. All right, let's put this cover adhesive. There we go. All right, to remove the main storage, same thing, remove these tiny screws, tiny one, and then bring it up in 15 degree. And then you want to pull it backward like that. And there's a little thermal pad in here. This thermal pad, it just tries to help the cool down the firmware in there. This one, it comes with a Kapton tape. You don't need to put a Kapton tape on yours. Just grab yours. Bring it down in 45 inside the connector. Push it towards the motherboard and put the tiny screw right at the back. Just like that. All right, once you've done that, if you have this connected to the battery, plug it back in. Grab the bottom cover. Again, remember you can put another, this extra one in this other side and format it as an extra storage, or if not, just take it out. And put the bottom cover on top. Push down the corners, make sure you hear those nice big click sounds. Tighten up the screw in the corner front end and it will pull the cover to itself. Put the short screws in the front row and the long screws all the way to the back. Right now I'm going to power on, I'm going to put the USB boot drive in and so you guys can see that it actually turns on and I can install the windows. If you want to see how to install the windows, just uh, follow the link in my video description and you will see the proper way of installing it. So I'm gonna power it on. When you install the windows, you wanna make sure that you have your charger plugged in. So let me see, this one gets connected right through here on the side. All right, so I have my USB boot drive right in here. So I'm gonna plug into a USB port. This one has USB-C, there's a USB port right in here. I'll plug it in here. When you power on, if you have disconnected battery, it might take a few seconds to boot up to show anything on the screen. So an F12 is for a boot menu. So I'm just gonna wait a few seconds. It might take up to five to 10 seconds before you get anything on the screen, so don't panic. There we go. So I'm gonna press F12. But it will just automatically detect the USB and it will start rolling up the USB boot drive. Right now it's detected the USB boot drive and it's gonna take me to a Windows installation process. If the mouse trackpad doesn't work, don't worry about it. You can use an external mouse 
to finish your installation. And once you're inside the Windows, you do Windows Update and it will automatically install the controllers for the trackpads. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to help you guys as much as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.